I'm Bright Garlic and thank you for watching this video. I want to tell you how to live a happy and content life. This video is aimed at anybody between the age of 10 and 25, but it might be useful to anybody else. I'm no expert on how to live and I'm no expert on how to be a young person. I'm alive and I have been a young person. And I think I've had a kind of extraordinary life, a life that I'm really grateful for. And just maybe the things that I'm about to talk to you about might be enough to save your life or to give you a sense that life is worth living. I've been in a position before where I've had a belt around my neck and I've stood at the edge of a cliff and I've had a knife against my throat and I've thought, it's not worth it, life is not worth it, I'm ready to give up. So for anybody out there who is feeling that way, maybe this video is for you. I want to tell you that life is worth it. There is always light in the darkness. So I, I'm not really sure how to do this. I, I haven't really thought it through to any great extent, but I want to try and distill some of the wisdom that I've learned about how to live and how to be a young person. The first thing that I want to tell you is I myself now am recovering from a life-threatening cancer. I've lived with that for five years. I feel like I've passed a turning point and I'm really beginning to heal. And I'm actually very grateful for the cancer. It has been the greatest teacher I've ever had. So what do I want to say first? I think it's really important that you understand and you have a sense of this every day that you love life and you really enjoy life. Love the life that you've been given and try to enjoy it every day. Know why you're alive. It's also important to feel everything feel every emotion that arises inside of you. Don't bury it. Don't hide from it. Don't run away from it. Don't cover it up by escaping into alcohol or drugs or the internet or sleeping around. Make sure that you feel everything. You feel it deeply. And that way you live fully. You don't deny anything. And believe me, you won't grow up into an adult with lots of problems. Many of the people that I worked with were people who didn't know how to feel anymore. They didn't know how to feel their anger. They didn't know how to feel their hurt. They didn't know how to feel their excitement or to feel the sense of worthiness, worthiness or the sense that it was worth celebrating their own success or celebrating the success of others. Many people that I've worked with didn't really know why they were alive. They stopped feeling long ago. So feel everything. It's also important every day when you wake up to feel a gratitude for what you have. You're alive right now. And there are people dying right now. There are children in hospitals fighting for their lives. There are people all around the world dying from all kinds of illnesses. There are people starving, people dying of malnutrition and dehydration. And you're alive right now. Whatever is in your life, feel gratitude for the life that you have. If you're going to live a content life, you need to be aware of how you live. And the only way that you can be aware of how you live is to know yourself. To examine what you think, to examine what you feel, to examine your emotions, your moods, your behaviours, your actions, the consequences of the choices you made, to examine your relationships, find out what makes you tick on the inside, find out what excites you, 
Find out what creates fear in you. Find out what you love. Know yourself. People have talked about it for thousands of years. It's really very simple. And to know yourself, start by watching your mind. What kind of thoughts do you have? Do you have the same thoughts on a regular basis? Do you have lots of different thoughts? Does your mind run around non-stop? A monkey mind, jumping from here to there, always after something to do. Or do you have a very tranquil mind? Watch your mind. Find out how one thought leads to another. Find out how the thoughts that you have lead to different emotions and lead to different behaviours. And learn to control the thoughts that you have. Learn to control the behaviours that come from these thoughts. When you develop that ability to watch your mind, you also realise that between the thoughts there is a stillness, a silence. It's important for you to be aware of that. If possible, and I know it's very hard when you're young, but if possible, try to be aware of that stillness. And every day, just for a short while, try to experience that stillness. A simple way to start is to just take notice when you wake up in the morning. Just close your eyes. Watch your thoughts. And then notice when one thought finishes before another begins. There's a stillness there. There's no activity. There is silence. That's really your true nature. That pure awareness in that space. Watch that silence. Feel it. You can do it anytime really. You don't have to do it in the morning. You don't have to meditate. You can do it when you're walking to school. You can do it when you're washing the dishes. You can do it when you're on the phone, listening to a friend. You're not thinking, you're listening. Watch your mind and experience that stillness and that silence as often as possible. For many of us, and particularly adults, I'm sure that all of you have this experience of watching your parents or watching some ad other adult that you know running around like crazy, doing so many different things that they feel they need to do and you wonder, why are they doing that? Why are they so busy all the time? I guess your parents will probably tell you that, well, they've got a job to do. They've got things to get done for the family and sometimes your parents will tell you that they've got to get things organized you know, worried about next week they're worried about six months down the track parents are often a good a good way to reflect back at us what's going on in our own minds but you may have friends like that or you might be like that yourself constantly preoccupied with tomorrow or ruminating about the past, yesterday. It's important to try to live in the now, in what some people call the present moment. Picture an infinity sign, the number eight on its side. On one side you have the past, on the other side you have the future. Many people spend their entire lives going through the past, constantly going over the past experiencing everything in the past, living with regret, or imagining the future, worrying about the future, constantly worrying about what will happen, thinking, fantasizing about the future. And they go between the two things, past and future, past and future. And they miss out on the now, the present moment. If you want to save yourself a lot of suffering in life, don't worry about tomorrow and try to let go of yesterday. Try to bring all your attention, the attention of your mind, the attention of your heart, the attention of all of your senses to now. And you will achieve much more in your life and have a greater sense of happiness if you're able to do that. Some of you may experience anxiety or know somebody who has anxiety. 
most people who have anxiety are suffering from a problem with the imagination. They imagine scenarios in the future and those scenarios make them very uncomfortable. They imagine meeting people and saying the wrong thing. They imagine doing a test and failing. They imagine going outside and somebody they see who they don't like sees them. They find themselves in all kinds of imaginary situations that are uncomfortable. But really, it's not real. Anxiety is a condition of the mind. It's really an excess of imagination. Isn't it better to use your imagination for good rather than evil? If you can bring your attention back to the present moment, you'll live fully. If you can live in the present moment, bring your attention to the things that you do, and you'll find that most things are actually quite enjoyable. But you will notice that there are things that you really love. It's important to find out what are the things that I really love? What are the things that excite me? What are the things that vitalize me, that create vitality, a sense of life? These are the things that will guide you in life. If you can find those things that you love, anchor yourself to them and follow them. Now, I'm not talking about a girl or a boy or somebody that you're in a relationship with. I'm talking about some kind of activity, something that you can do that you feel a great sense of love for. I paint. I go on bushwalks. I write. I spend time in the natural world. I spend time with my son, kicking a footy, soccer ball, playing cricket. These are all things that I love. And these are things that excite me. These are the things that guide my life. If you can find what you love and you're thinking about some kind of career in the future or you're working hard at school and aspiring to something in the future, find what you love and see if you can attach what you love to what you're doing now and perhaps in the future the thing that you will do will be the thing that you love a lot of people talk about dreams and dreams are wonderful but dreams can also cause great suffering and the reason they cause great suffering is once again we get attached to this idea of the future the future that never comes it's much better for you to think about your dreams you know write down a list of your dreams what are your dreams in all the different areas of your life and then ask yourself what is at the core of my dreams what do I really want to give you an example I've known many writers in my life and I myself am a writer and some writers, when you ask them, why do you write? You know, what is it about this dream of writing that so appeals to you? Some of them will say things like, I want to be a great writer. I want to change the world. I want to be famous. I want to earn lots of money. I want to be the next J.K. Rowling. Very few of these people really understand What's at the core of that dream? And really this dream is a dream of attachment. And often it will result in great suffering. It's better to understand what is inside of the dream. Do you want to be a writer? Because you love the act of writing and you want to contribute to the greater good of the world. Do you want to be a writer because it allows you to express who you really are? That's just one example, but it could be anything. So find out what's at the core of your dreams and then follow them. But always be aware. Don't be led by the dream itself. Be led by what is most important to you. In life, it's also important to express our emotions. 
I met many, many adults and many, many young people and many much older people, people in their 80s and 90s who have forgotten how to express their emotions, to express how they feel. They've spent years and years, and it's particularly sad with old people who spent years and years bottling this stuff up, pushing it down, burying it, putting a lid on it, whatever metaphor you want to express that with. Rather than letting out those emotions and expressing how they feel, they've hidden them away. And mostly they've hidden them away or bottled them away because of fear. It's better to express your emotions than to bottle them away. You'll be healthier for it and you'll live longer and you'll be happier. But a word of caution. It's wonderful to express your emotions, but you have to do it in a mindful way, considerate of the feeling of others. Now, I'm not saying don't say things because you're afraid of the impact it will have on others. I'm saying do it carefully. I could express my anger at my son, and I could be so angry I just about kill him, or I give him a heart attack from fear better that I understand the frustration first that led to that anger and I express the frustration before it turns into anger. And if I am angry, I express I'm angry for this reason. I don't go and have a tantrum or you know, go psycho and throw things at him. Always be aware of the emotions that you're carrying and when a situation is creating emotions in you, Express your emotions, particularly when they're in that mild state first, rather than letting them become really extreme. But if some emotions do become extreme, let them out rather than bottle them up. And if you must express your anger, rather than trying to prevent your anger at an earlier stage, do it in a way that is safe to others. Better do that than spend your time in a prison cell wondering about why you did what you did, or worse still, getting yourself into a fight and ending up dead and pushing up daisies. Learn how to express your needs to others. We all have things that we need from other people. We all have things that we need that only we can provide for ourselves. And it's easy to assume that everybody else knows what we need. And I've met many, many people, and I've experienced it myself, who've got older in life and realised that I needed things. And I needed things from the people around me, and they didn't know. Or they prevented me from getting them. Uh, I can think of a couple of examples uh, that are relevant to me. I probably needed more love from my father, and I needed to hear him say that he loved me and for him to spend time with me and I never said that now of course I've dealt with that issue since but I've come across that many many times you know a parent and a child and the child has never told the parent what they need from them and the parent is too ignorant to see better to say what you need from somebody to express your needs and they'll either say no, in which case you know you're never going to get it from them, so better to let go. Or they'll do something about addressing that. And at least that way you won't live with regret. We all end up feeling at different times in life that sometimes it's just too much. That, why are we here? Who cares if I'm gone? I don't know why I'm on the planet. I'm better off dead. Now, I experienced that feeling a lot between the age of 19 and 25. I haven't had that for a long, long time. And I made a vow when I reached 28 that I would never take my own life. And I would never contemplate suicide. And so that's never crossed my mind since. But during that early period I suffered a very dark depression and I didn't know who to turn to and I bottled everything up and the love that I needed 
turned into anger, an aimless anger that raged at the world. But instead of really venting that at the world, I vented it at myself. I turned to heavy music, and I still love heavy music, but for different reasons. And I cut myself, self-mutilation it's called these days. And I did all kinds of other things. In a sense, I was calling out for help, but I was also punishing myself. And when I did grow out of that, eventually, many years later when I studied social work and therapy, I realized that I did suffer a depression. And I came very, very close, you know, this close to suicide. And later I wor worked with mothers who had lost their children to suicide. And I worked with young people who were very close to suicide. And I recognized myself in them. What I'd like to say is, before shit hits the fan, before shit hits the fan, reach out to somebody. There is always somebody willing to listen. And if you can't find the right person, you keep looking. And if your friends are not the right people, you go to an adult. And if you can't find a worthwhile adult, you go to a counsellor. And if you don't feel right with that counsellor the first time, then it ain't going to work. You find another counsellor. Or you go to a priest. Or you go to somebody. Or a Buddhist. Or a Buddhist monk. You go to somebody who is willing to listen. And just listen. And you vent it. You let it all out. You share how you feel. And chances are that some adults will have experienced all the things that you're feeling. You may feel very alone, you may feel very isolated. You may feel like no one understands me. And it may be true that nobody will ever truly understand any other human being completely. But there are people who will understand how you feel because they've felt it themselves. So reach out for help. Trust that somebody else can help you. Somebody else can go for that journey with you for a little while and to help you sit with your pain and to move beyond your pain and to let go. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm a Buddhist and it said that the Buddha once said, be a light unto yourself. That means look into your own darkness, the darkness of your ignorance, and understand the causes of your suffering. The Buddha also advocated what is called the middle way. Now the middle way is the avoidance of extremes. If you consider this as a continuum, all the things in life, one extreme, another extreme. The Buddha suggested that if we travel through the middle way, take the middle path, we will avoid the extremes and will suffer less. Now you can think about that in any aspect of life, whether it's the food you eat, how much alcohol you consume, how you use drugs, whether you smoke, the choices you make, the people you hang around with, how hard you work, how hard you study. Just avoid extremes and you'll be happier for it. Avoid extremes! When it comes to the avoidance of extremes, there is an issue in particular I think that might be relevant to you. And that is the issue of electronic devices. Now we all have them, whether it's an iPad or an iPod or a mobile phone. We're all very comfortable with our new tools and gadgets. But what I'd like to say to you, is it necessary for you to spend so much time with your electronic device? And here's a couple of reasons that you might want to reconsider. First of all, spending so much time in a virtual world or in a virtual correspondence disconnects you from real relationships. And you don't develop the kinds of relationships you have when you have face-to-face -face conversations with people. Secondly, there's a lot of evidence coming out 
that these kinds of devices are bad for your health. In fact, there is evidence that goes so far as to suggest that too much exposure and close prolonged exposure to things like mobile phones and iPads can cause tumours. Now, I thought I'd give you an example. I told you that I had cancer. Originally, I had cancer in my left kidney. I had a six centimetre tumour, you know, something this big. And my whole kidney had to be taken out. Now, I wanted to show you a picture from nine years ago, nearly 10 years ago. That's me with my young son. And if you look carefully there, you can see a mobile phone. And that mobile phone is right on the area of my left kidney. Now, I used to carry that mobile phone with me everywhere. And I think there's no coincidence that I ended up with a big tumour there. As I said, it's not the cause of my cancer, but I think it certainly made things worse. And there's plenty of evidence from neurosurgeons that the use of mobile phones on your preferred side um, results in the development of tumours on that side of the brain. You might want to reconsider how much you use your mobile phone or your iPad or your iPod and whether or not you're spending too much time with it. One thing I strongly suggest is that you don't take your phone or your iPad or your iPod to bed. Don't make it your new best friend. Otherwise, later in life, you're going to pay a price. I think that's all I really want to say about the avoidance of extremes. Enjoy those tools, but don't spend too much time with them. In life, it's also important to be aware of the words that we choose and how we talk to people. And I don't want to say much about that except that the words that you choose to give out, the words that you choose to connect with other people are the words that will come back to you. When I was younger, I was very angry and I treated people with hostility and people isolated me. They treated me badly back in return. Well, not everybody, but many people, especially the people that I was hostile towards. And that's a natural reaction to hostility. What you give out will come back to you, whether you're angry or not. If you choose your words carefully, you'll get a good response back. If you choose to show your hostility in a way that is unreasonable, you'll receive hostility back. If you choose to show kindness to the world and use kind, expressive words, that's how people will treat you. And you'll find that if you do that, many more doors of opportunity will open for you. I think if I've learned one thing, it's probably this. And as I said, I've had cancer for five years. It's come and gone, and it's back again, and hopefully it will go again. I've learned it's really important to focus our energy, our precious life energy. And in Chinese philosophy, that's called the life force. It's important to focus our energy on people and things that really matter. And we're all guilty to some degree of spending time doing things that don't really matter or associating with people that don't really contribute to the value of our life. Isn't it better that you choose to do things that really matter to you, things that resonate with who you are, things that excite you, things that make you feel like you're living your life fully. Much better to choose wisely than to choose poorly and pay those consequences. And I spoke a little bit about dreams before and about not just seeing the dream, but seeing what is within the dream, the core of the dreams. What I'd like to suggest to you is that if you want things in life, whether you aspire to succeed in any endeavor, whether you aspire to some kind of career, some kind of life path where you think there are things on that path that will be satisfying. This is what I would suggest to you. You have a very powerful mind, much more powerful than you realize. 
And I said earlier on, know yourself. Know, first of all, what it is you want. Know what you need and know what you want. And realize the difference. Once you realize what you need and what you want, ask yourself, what do I really want in my life? And take time out every now and then to see with your mind's eye, to visualize what it is that you want. And see everything. See all the good things involved in getting what you want. Everything along the path and everything when you get what you want that unfolds and see all the really bad things and all the real tough challenges and difficulties presented by chasing that thing that you want. See everything. And as you see these things, both good and bad, feel them. Feel what it will be like to experience those things. When we think about what we want in life, we're often attached to this romantic ideal, I guess, of... Um, the end result. Uh, to use an example, an Olympic swimmer is attached to the end result of wearing that gold medallion around his neck in the Olympics. But he may not see at that early stage of wanting to become an Olympic swimmer how much sacrifice is involved in getting what he wants, how much personal sacrifice, how much time in the pool, how much time away from people that he loves to be with, how much having to eat the right food, how much exercise, how much giving up other things that he might like to do. So while it might be satisfying to set a personal best, to set a world record, an Olympic record, or to get that gold medal and all the accolades that come with that when he comes back home, Along the way, he's had to give up a lot. My suggestion to you would be to visualize the things you want, see what they require of you, and see what will come from them. To feel both those things. You can feel things. You can imagine anything and feel it. So use that. Use that ability. And what that will do is that will help you to determine which direction you need to take and what you need to do. It will help you to catalyze the right actions in your life, to make the right choices. And sometimes it will help you to decide, I thought I wanted this, but actually I don't. And there's no harm in dropping something. Many people are unhappy about their lives and they don't know how to change their life and they get stuck in ruts. But I think we've all experienced that and we have a sense that before that happens, you know that you're kind of dissatisfied. What I would say to you is if you have a sense that you are unhappy with some part of your life or this dissatisfaction is getting worse. Do something about it. Don't put up with things that are immensely dissatisfying. Sure, there are things that we have to tolerate in life, like, for example, if you want to go to university and you want to study something and there's a cut-off score to get in, you know you're going to have to work so hard to get that score. Once again, as I said before, you can visualize these things, see whether you really want that. But It's very easy to put up with things and it's very easy to say I'm not willing to make the change because I'm afraid of what will happen. You'd much rather suffer than take a risk. So don't be afraid to take that risk and make the changes necessary. And related to that, take risks. Take calculated risks. Once again, 
visualize. If there is a situation that you're uncertain about and you have time to think about it, visualize what the options are, visualize what could happen, and weigh it up and take calculated risks. If you take the right risks, you may end up getting a great reward out of it. And for all the risks that you take, that end result, what you achieve, the sense of compensation, I guess, for what you've given up will feel far greater than had you have given little and achieved something great. I think, you know, it's pretty clear to see that all the people who have achieved great things in life have taken great risks. But I would urge you to take calculated great risks. Be very careful, don't take stupid risks. And one of the things about being young is we have a willingness to test ourselves and to flirt with death and to see how far can I get to the point where I could just about lose my life. It's not worth it. I've met people who have taken those kind of risks and who nearly died, but instead walked away with brain injuries or lost limbs. And for the most part, those people have really suffered greatly. Some people are appreciative of what happened, but most of them have suffered immensely and regret having taken the risk. So think really, really carefully. I'll give you one more example. I met a young man. He was in a, uh, I guess you'd say it was a prison. It was a prison for young people before the adult prison. And that young man was a hard drinker. And he went out drinking one night and he was driving a car with his best buddy as the passenger. And he crashed the car and killed his best buddy. He was in prison for five years and he was a tortured soul. There was not a day that went by that he didn't think about his best buddy and that split decision that he made to drive home instead of crashing in his mate's place or the decision to just not drink and go out and enjoy himself. We all make those split decisions. We all take risks. But you need to take calculated, kind of precise risks, if you like, where you know and have some sense of what the outcome might be. Don't be too afraid to take risks with an unknown outcome, but just be aware of what the outcome could be. Better to know that you have a boundary. This is how far I'll go. This is where I'll start from and I'm not willing to go past this point. I said before that if you don't like some part of your own life, do something about it, make a change. The same is true for the world. If you're unhappy with what the world looks like, if you're unhappy with society, if you don't like the way the world is going down the gurgler and the world sucks and no one cares about one another and the powers that be are screwing everybody over and your teachers suck or lecturers suck or your parents suck or people you know suck or you know you're so angry you just feel like you know pulling a gun and taking care of everybody or whatever your frustration might be this is what I would say to you. Take a good look at yourself. Ask yourself, how am I living my life? How am I making the most of my life? And then take a good look at the world and ask yourself, what can I do about it? There is always something you can do to make the world a better place. And you won't know without trying sometimes. So rather than bitching about how bad it is, get out there and do something about it. And you'll feel immensely satisfied that you tried. 
whether you succeed or fail, there really is no failure. The only failure comes when you don't learn from your mistakes. Whether you succeed or fail, it doesn't matter. Having a go is what matters. Knowing that you put in, you made the effort to make the world a better place. Don't be afraid to have a go. You know, life really is precious. It really is a gift. You might ask, well, a gift from whom or from what? Well, I'm not going to tell you the answer to that because that's for you to figure out. Maybe you feel life is a gift from God or from your parents or it just is. Maybe you don't feel it's a gift, but I'm telling you it is a gift. You're in this precious human body right now experiencing a precious human life and of all the other lives that it's possible to live. Make it count. Make it count for something. Appreciate what you have. Appreciate this human life and make it count. And it's really important. This, this took me a long time to realise. And I would probably go so far as to say it took me 20 years to really realise this. It's important to be you. Don't try to be anyone else. Accept you as you are right now. And I know when you're young, you're trying to kind of find your identity. We don't know who we are. And you know, we experiment. We change our hair. And I used to have short hair, by the way. And we dye our hair. And, you know, we wear makeup. And I don't have any on, but used to wear makeup myself once, believe it or not. We change our clothes. We listen to different kinds of music. We associate with certain subgenres. And we identify with certain groups of people and we get attached to certain identities, you know, gay and heterosexual and all of this kind of stuff. We're experimenting with our identity. But none of that is really you. I said earlier that your true nature is that pure awareness that you experience in utter stillness and silence. But it's okay to experiment. It's okay to search for your identity. There is nothing wrong with that. Just remember, don't get too attached. You know, you'll change over time. We all do. I'm no longer the angry young man that I was. But remember to be you. Be authentically you. Whatever you are right now. Don't aspire to be like the young model in the magazine and worry about being as skinny as her. Don't aspire to be like your favourite rock star. Don't aspire to be like somebody on television. You're only seeing, you know, a two-dimensional image of that person. You don't know the rest of them and all the sadness and tragedy that fills their life and all the sense of failure. You only see the glamorous side. And don't try and be like any of the cool kids. Just be you. Be authentically you. And know that by being you, you're honouring your own spirit. Existence would be lost without you. You, as you are now, are only ever going to come around once in the whole of existence. So be you. It's really important that you never doubt your true potential. We spend so much of our life trying to be what others expect us to be or tell us we should be. And really, that's a load of crap. It's important that you know you have great potential. And I want you to believe that you can be your greatest possible vision of yourself. Know who you are 
and then you will know what you are capable of. But don't be afraid to see great things for yourself. Know that you can be and achieve anything you want. But also know that as you are right now or at any time is absolutely perfect. You don't have to be anything else. You can be just you right now at any moment. I can't really think of anything else to say and I thank you very much for being patient and listening to this long-winded diatribe from an old guy. I guess I would like to imagine that this has been helpful for some of you. Just remember that if somebody like me who's been through great darkness and great suffering can turn my life around and have an, an immensely rewarding and satisfying happy and content life, so can you. Life is what you make it. Bye. Avoid extremes. Ah!